Hello dear students, we have already come into unit 2. Here is a very interesting story and as I was reading it, I was reminded about my childhood days when I was having the fear of riding a bicycle. We see a similar kind of story in Pushpa's life and uh, if you did not read the story, you can pause the video and read the story so it will make our exercises and our grammar more fun and easier. All right, so let's look at the new words. The new words in this unit are skinned, which means removed the outer layer of the skin. That is what happened when Pushpa fell off the bicycle, when she tried to learn the bicycle the first time. It's a little painful having, you know, the feeling of skin, you know, it kind of hurts. And second one is bruise. This is something that we often encounter when we go out to play or when even moms are cooking in the kitchen, we get a small cut. So that is called bruise and it is to get wounded. The next word is experience. We all have experiences, some are good, some are bad. So what does experience mean? An event that leaves a strong memory. That's right, it's good or bad, it's still a strong memory. The next one is several. Several means many. There were several people at the store or there were several people gathered around the accident site. So we could say use that word for several, which means many. The next word is overcome. It means to defeat something or to succeed in something or to do a thing successfully. All right. So overcome is to defeat something or to do something successfully. We all have things that we overcome daily or as part of life. We overcome fears, we overcome failures, we overcome some setbacks. Okay. So that's where we use the word overcome. The last word in this unit is courage. That is something we all would like to have. Have the courage to do new things. Have the courage to do some things that are really hard. Sometimes it's just courage to face an exam. Okay, the courage means bravery, right? Okay, so these are the new words that we have learnt in this unit. Moving on, the next one is fill in the blanks. So in this exercise, which is on page number 15, you have to fill in the blanks with the correct word. There are two words that are given and uh, only one of it when we fill it into the blank will make proper sense. Let's take the first one for example. I must, there are two words given, overcome slash accept. Alright, so which word would fit into that sentence better? Let's see. I must overcome or accept my fear of riding bicycles. I think accept would mean a negative sentence. So let's use the word overcome and see. I must overcome my fear of riding bicycles. That's a very positive statement. And it also shows that it's fitting better than the word accept. Let's take one more example and then I'll let you do the rest of it. Alok was overjoyed there are two words let's see which will fit into the sentence better because he was selected in the cricket team so sad Alok was sad because he was selected in the cricket team I don't know if it sounds like a sensible sentence so overjoyed would be more appropriate all right you can go ahead and do the rest of it after the whole chapter is over. Next one is exercise B. Use the given words in sentences of your own. We have already learned a few important 
things about making sentences. So, with that knowledge, let's try and make sentences with these words. In page number 15, in the exercise B, you have a few words that are given. And let's take the first one and see. You are asked to make sentence. Let's see from what we have learned. It, it needs to start with a capital. My school is near the park. So, and starts with a capital and ends with either a full stop or a question mark or an exclamatory mark. So, let's see which fits better. I think it, would, it is a statement. My school is near the park. So, we will use a full stop which is the most appropriate punctuation. If you have to make it a question statement, what would we write? Is your school near the park? Okay. So, this becomes a question statement. So, there are a number of words, about six of them. You can try and make sentences with those six words. Alright, moving on to the next one is question and answers. For this, you can pause the video and take out your notebooks and write answers, keeping in mind what we have learned about complete sentences or you can wait till the end of the video and finish your answers. All right, now it's grammar time. As I mentioned, grammar is something very, very important. It's like a backbone of English. All right, today we're going to learn something very, very common and very commonly found in every sentence, nouns. So, what is a noun? Noun is the name of a person, place, animal or a thing. So, noun is the name of a person, place, animal or thing. Let's see for an example. Sujata. Okay, is a person and uh, a place can be New Delhi or it can be even a park is a place. Animal as you all know, any animal that is mentioned and the thing is anything that the sentence is referring to. Alright, so let's see in your textbook in page number 16. The exercise D, you can see example, man is person, telephone is a thing, buffalo is a animal, room is a place. So, any name re referring a person, place, animal or thing is a noun. So, you can go ahead and fill in those blanks and answer whether they are person, place, animal or thing. In the very next page, we continue with the nouns that is exercise E. It gives you a small paragraph of uh, words which is the story of a king. I'll just read the first line for you and it's already underlined. You can go ahead and underline the rest. Once a greedy king lived a greedy king. So, king is a person so we underline that. Lived in a castle, in a big castle. Castle is a place. Then it goes on into the next line which says he collected unjust taxes. So, taxes is a thing. Alright. So, similar way you can underline the rest of the story. Now, we will learn about a little bit about speaking and listening. 
So for that, you have to prepare a small paragraph about how you have the experience of riding a bicycle and you speak about it to your friends. And when your friends write and speak about it, then you listen to it. So there's listening and speaking. So when you listen and speak, you gain more ideas and you express more ideas. That is basically communication. All right. Writing. Our writing exercise. Write down two things that you are afraid of. I'm sure all of us have small and big things that we are afraid of. So here there's an example. I am afraid of spiders. I'm sure people will write lizards, cockroaches, rats and scared of heights and different things. So give two reasons for your fear. So this writing will help you to make proper sentences and have the right punctuation. It's like an exercise to help you practice better. Let's move on. This next story is about the first day of Isha in her school bus. I'm sure we all have experiences where we have had some kind of a experience, a strong memory, good or bad about our first day at school or first day in the school bus or first day in our playground. All right, goes on the list. So here, Isha had a very good experience. All right, so this, it's a happy ending story. Let's look at the new words that we have learned. The first word is schedule. Schedule means a plan of things that are to be done. So your teacher will have a schedule for you for the day. Your mom and your dad will have a schedule for their office, for home. So schedule is a plan of things that are to be done. The next word is arrangement. It's the action of being arranged or rather putting things in order. If you put things in order, everything will be neat and, and you can find things or you can do things more easily when they are arranged. Even when your books are arranged, your toys are arranged or uh, even when your notes are well arranged and well written, it's more easier for you to study. All right, excitement. Everybody likes some kind of an excitement in their lives. Let's see what's the meaning. A feeling of great happiness. I'm excited that my dad is coming today. I'm excited that my aunt is visiting me. So excitement, a feeling of great happiness. Lumbering, that's a, another new word that we are learning in this unit. Lumbering means move in a slow and awkward way. So the bus that Isha was traveling, the school bus was lumbering as it reached the school. That means because it's a school zone, the bus goes little slowly, right? So moving in a slow and awkward way. The last word in this unit is slumped. It means to sit or fall heavily. That's something that most of us do on our sofas. When we are either tired or excited, we just go and just fall off on our sofas. But slumped is more in a negative way when you're tired or when you're just kind of just want to relax you just kind of slump into the seat we're going to learn if we add less or full to a word how we can change that word into opposites interesting right let's take a word called care Okay, care plus less gives us the word careless and care plus when you add the word full it gives you the word careful. See how they've become opposites? Careless is mostly used in a negative way and careful is used in a positive way. They are opposite. She is a very careful girl and he is a very careless boy. All right. See, just by the addition of a less and a full, the words have turned into opposites. There are four more words in this 
you are in this exercise and you can do it and see how it may it's very interesting let's just take one more example faith all right so when we add the le the word less becomes faithless and this becomes faithful faithful is a good quality so it's a positive um, sense statement positive word and faithless is a negative word same way you can look at the rest of the words and see how they are turned into opposites all right we come to the question and answer section which for which you have to take down your notebook and your pens and you can pause the video and answer these questions because if you have read the story well you will be able to answer it quickly grammar time grammar helps to give more structure and more quality to your sentences so that's why we give lot of importance to grammar in the english language all right so we are again going to learn about nouns i promise you it's not going to be boring because every unit we're going to learn something more in deep all right so we learned what are nouns in the previous unit we learned nouns are names of person place thing or animal now what's the next thing about nouns we are going to learn and proper nouns right so the word common itself says it's a common name that we use all right and proper nouns is the name itself it's given in right in your book on page number 21 it says the common noun is the first example boy okay all the boys it's common it's a common word that we use all right and proper can be here is given mohan all right then let's take an example of the famous cricketers okay so it's a common noun and all of us will quickly remember the word or i'm sure many of you will remember this name and many of you will remember other names but that's okay so that's a proper noun let's take another example freedom fighters that is a common noun and immediately we will all remember the father of our nation mahatma gandhi ji all right so they are proper nouns that is the name of the person itself but the group of names are called common nouns all right here there are planets continents countries so many are given and you are asked to fill the proper nouns this is an easy exercise it's going to be fun too because everyone will have different different names all right so go ahead and write those and that brings us to the end of unit 2